we've been doing some work on the engine and I've removed the um, I've already removed the intake before and replaced it with a custom made intake now we have uh, removed the entire EGR system which has been disabled for about two years already but I wanted to have it gone because it was leaking a little bit of boost pressure and it was getting everything dirty around the back of the engine and while I was doing that I suddenly uh, came to the conclusion for hey I have an easy access right now to the glow plugs of which I know one was bad uh, so why wouldn't I change those as well so I got uh, four new glow plugs they are Biro, Biro glow plugs let's have a look at them so these are the glow plugs and the number that's written on them if it will focus Yeah, it was going to. It's upside down. So this is the information that is written on the glow plug itself. So these are the new ones, the Beerus. Here are my old ones. So four old ones and the new ones. So they are the same, as you can tell. So, of course, diagnostic equipment will give you an error code for glow plugs, but generally it will only give you a general error, since the ECU doesn't actually measure if it's the glow plug that goes bad, it actually checks over the glow plug relay which is this little box right here so the metal box with a big blue plug on uh, what you can do is do a resistance check on that uh, metal box on the relay itself while well, disconnect the plugs and you can do a resistance check on the four leads that lead up to the glow plugs in the back because this is a positive contact and it takes the ground through the body of the glow plug so what you do in effect is measure the resistance between the positive end and the negative end being the body of the glow plug because this is just a sort of a resistor which heats up so if we do a resistance check you can check if one is bad so in my case it was cylinder 2 and 3 uh, and I can show you if I take my multimeter, put it into resistance mode, yeah, you can read that. And I'm going to check the resistance between the positive over here and the body of the plug. So I'm going to do this. And then we measure, in this case we have 1.3 ohms, okay, I'm going to take the second plug, well they're no longer in order but you know you get the gist, we've got 75 ohms, third one, this is 1.46 kilo ohms and last but not least the fourth one so this is the, going to be the one in either the second or third cylinder I don't remember and as you can tell 32 23 22 mega ohms so this one is bad yeah we're going to compare a new one just to get an idea of what it should read so I'll just open up a new one doesn't matter on which terminal you put the positive or the negative and there we go 
0.9 ohms so this is a good one yeah it should read 75 ohms and even the the one kilo ohm i think it's still acceptable uh it didn't give me a fault code for the other three plugs but mega ohms that's a bad sign so that's how you can troubleshoot the glow plugs on a 1.6 hdi uh, we're going to reinstall them I'm going to put some uh, NTCs on the threads. It's not, uh, they don't tell you to do that, but I have some really great uh, heat proof NTCs, so I'm going to do that. Makes changing them a lot easier. I got very lucky because I did not have any problems with removing them whatsoever. The plugs that attach to them on the end are a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to. And besides, the air box and the um, EGR pipe and EGR cooler assembly. I also removed this piece which mounts to the back of the engine. This is where the air box sits in. Um, over here there's a stud with a 10 millimeter nut. I had to undo that already to remove the EGR cooler. And over here there's an 8 millimeter bolt. So remove that. And then you can also, I think it was mounted like this, you just have to clip out the lead for the glow plugs. And then you can remove this piece and uh, get access to the uh, second and third cylinder glow plug a lot easier. The fourth cylinder glow plug is located just on that side of the uh, high pressure fuel uh, pump. It's also a little bit of a pain to get to. And the size of the socket you need is an eight millimeter deep socket yeah i use a one and a quarter drive eight millimeter deep socket to install and remove these glow plugs so i'm going to reinstall them uh, once i finish that i'm not going to reinstall the bracket uh, we're going to continue with reinstallation of the gearbox i also have to drain the oil uh, of the sump because I have a little bit of an oil leak around the sump, so I'm going to change that. Uh, I have no oil seal, uh, oil plug seals for the gearbox and the sump as well. Uh, refill the gearbox, and that's it. I already reinstalled the clutch and the flywheel. Uh, in case you're wondering, because they do not state a torque value on the packaging of these glow plugs, so we're going to have a look in my little workshop manual. It's still the 207 workshop manual, but it's the same engine, okay? Uh, so, we're going to engine the 1.6 liter diesel. And we're going to look for the glow plugs. Um, no, they're not over here. Just have a look in the overview. Glow plug, glow plug. Glow plugs, 5C2. B, 5C, pre-post heating, glow plug, yes. And what's the torque value? Um, on the 1.6 liter engine, it is 10 Newton meters to torque down the glow plugs. Um, how do you know if your glow plug is bad? Well. When it's cold, you will have some bluish smoke coming out the back, which is actually unburned fuel. And it might also look like it's running on only three cylinders, for example. Um, people say it, it's only used to start the engine, but that's not entirely true. The glow plugs also have a function when you're off the throttle on the diesels, because there's still a lot of air going into the chambers. It will cool down the chambers and it will reduce the efficiency when you go back onto the throttle and it will um, also uh, it, it helps with emissions a little bit as well 
but that's also their function. So they do work under normal driving conditions, uh, even while you're driving. So it's not a traditional glow plug that only glows when it's cold or when the light is on on the dash. That is far history for this engine. Um, so I think it is pretty important to get good working glow plugs, especially when you have the chance to do this while you're at it. Um, just changing the glow plugs I would never advise, but if you're at it, just do it, okay? That's the best advice I can give you. So before finishing off this uh, build, because I still need to reinstall the intake, uh, the air filter, um, I'm going to show you guys how I check the glow plugs through the relay connection. So I've got the relay connection right here. Uh, you can just about see it in this corner right here. It isn't much longer, so bear with me. So what are you going to see? Well, there's two big leads in the middle, uh, two small leads, which are just signal wires, and four medium-sized leads. Well, those four are the individual glow plugs, which is which you would have to check the uh, wiring diagram. So if I just put one probe into one of those contacts and the other one to ground, I should get a reading. There we go. 1.7 ohms. Second one. Make sure you get a good contact. One point five ohms. Third, one point five ohms, and final and fourth, one point five ohms. I've just run this engine once. Um, before I ran the engine, they all read one ohm. So as long as you have a pretty low resistance, you could say or guess that the glow plugs are all right. Like I said before, even in the kilo ohm range, they will still function, although maybe diminished. But as soon as you start reading mega ohms, it's time to change them. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.